Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, a couple days ago, I posted a poll uh, for the community, just checking to see if anyone would be interested in seeing some Ruby solutions. We did have at least one person who said no, uh, but there was a, a lot of other interest. So I thought we would just go through and solve some advent of code problems with Ruby. So day one, sonar sweep. The goal here is you kind of take the input as a list of numbers. So for part one of the advent of code is you take in a list of numbers and then you wanna figure out how many times it increased from one number to another number. Um, so you're kind of just counting the number of times the depth measurement increases. If you're not familiar with the advent of code, um, this is a project where through December, uh, like the first 25 days, there are a bunch of uh, little coding puzzles that you can solve. And once you have solved it, you can enter in your answer. So. Um, when you first sign up, you can log in with GitHub or Google, Reddit, Twitter, uh, whatever. Um, and then you just click on the top bar here and that will get you into the day. And the day will tell you um, sort of the problem. So there's gonna be like a long problem statement, then some example input, and then like an answer to that example input. So in this case, it gives us this list of numbers and then it tells us in this example, there's seven different measurements um, and then uh, you fill in your answer. And in, in this case, my answer was uh, 1711. Everyone has different, um, different example input. So you'll, you'll come down and you can actually like get your puzzle input here. And your puzzle input is gonna be a giant random string of numbers and it's different for everyone. So no one has the same input, at least that's how I understand it. Um, and you kind of, uh, yeah, you go through the process and you try to figure out what the answer is. So I've gone through and I've solved some of these already. Um, but I wanted to just go through the process of um, my thought process of how I would go about solving these. So let's jump into here and we'll just say like, this is uh, day one. So we're gonna take some of this input and what we wanna do is find the number of times it's increasing. And uh, let's see. So we'll do admin of code 21. And what I did is I made a directory for each day. So I have like day one. And then I also had, um, uh, let's see, bundle init. So I wanna initialize a new gem file at the base. Bundle add, bundle add rspec. And then I wanna say like rspec init, cause I wanna use rspec to write some tests for these little problems. Because when you have some tests that can really help you quickly iterate. So rspec dash dash init should initialize a .rspec file where you can control formatting and color and also a spec directory. And so what I wanna do is go into the spec directory and add day one spec.rb. And at the top, we're gonna to require dot dot slash day one and then like number increases.rb or something like that. Um, and then rspec.describe. Um, Maybe like, yeah, for this one, I'm just gonna use a method. Um, and the method is just gonna count the increases because this is a really, really simple problem. And I think it's simple on purpose because it lets you sort of get started. So here we wanna say like, it counts one increase or something like that. Uh, I can't spell increase. All right, so then we wanna say something like, we're kind of like writing what we want the code to actually look like when we ultimately implement it. Um, that doesn't make any sense. We're writing the <laughs> like the way we want to use the code that we ultimately implement. So here we might say something like um, actual is number or maybe like num number of increases for and then like it, in the actual input here, they're giving us this list of numbers. It's gonna look like this, right? It's like this giant list of numbers, but ultimately I want that to be in an array format because it is a sort of list of things. It's not a mapping, it's not a single value, it is an array. And so I'm gonna store this as an array. And we'll talk about like reading the file and parsing the file a little bit. Um, and, but like for, for this initial test, what I wanna do is just say like um, one, two. And so the number of increases be with one and two should be one. So I expect um, num to equal one. Okay, and when I run the test, it fails. There's not actually a file over there. So we wanna make the smallest change possible to make the test output change. Number 
increases.rb. So all I did was create the file. Now the test output should change. Maybe I spelled it wrong. It did not work. Day one, number increases. All right, whatever. We've got our, we've got our, at least we've got our tests running, um, albeit uh, like a kind of a annoying way. Uh, okay, so number of increases needs to take an argument. We'll call this like the input. And what we want to do is we want to iterate over each of the sort of the pairs in the input. But for now, what we can do is we can actually just return one because that will get our test passing. Um, and so what we need to do is have at least two tests so that we can't just hard code the answer. Um, so counts two increases. Uh, and maybe we'll do like one, two, three. And so this should give us two increases between one and two. That's one increase between two and three, that's two increases. And now we actually have to like uh, <laughs> write, some, write some code, right? Because we need to iterate over the input and count up the increases. And so there's enumerable, there is an enumerable method, Ruby enumerable each cons. So each cons is this method that takes each consecutive element of, um, of an object. So in this case, we can say like, Give me each consecutive element uh, where there's two in, in, uh, in the pair, and that will give us back each pair. So what we want to do is say something like input.eachcons2. So that's going to give us each pair, dot each do, or maybe dot inject or something, and we can start with zero. And so actually, before we even do that, let's uh, require uh, by bug just so that we can see what this is doing. So if we run this, now we can see the input is one, two. And if we do input dot each uh, cons two, that's gonna give us back an enumerator where it's gonna iterate over each pair. So if we did like dot each, um, we could say pair puts or p pair, and that's gonna print out one, two. That's not very interesting, but if we do it with the next input, then we get the pairs of one, two and two, three. So the, the array one, two, and then the array two, three are the arguments that are yielded to the block that we can then compare, like is um, one bigger than two or two bigger than three, et cetera, et cetera. And so what we can do is instead of just accepting the pair as an argument to the block, we can deconstruct this into like X and Y like that. And now we can say P uh, X, so that gives us one and two. And if we P Y, that gives us two and three. So now we can say print like X is less than Y and that should give us true, right? So that's giving us true back. Now what we wanna do, that kind of like gives us how many times it's true. And so instead of just passing each, what we can do is use inject. And inject is a way to sort of like collect up a bunch of things. In fact, collect is like another name for it, um, I think. Maybe it's map, I don't know. Uh, let's see, so inject. Ruby, so the inject method here is uh, available on the enumerable. It takes in, um, okay, so it's, oh, I guess the alternative is named reduce. So it takes in an initial value and then this becomes your accumulator. So your accumulator is, um, or like this, this is the initial value for your accumulator. Then your block takes in your accumulator and then each element that it's passed. So in this case, what we wanna do is pass in an initial count for how many times it's increasing. So for our case, we wanna start at zero because there's zero increases. Then our accumulator will be the count and the element that is yielded to the block because we're using each cons will be the pair of X and Y. So let's, let's take a look at how we might solve this. So now we can come down here and say something like each cons dot inject. Now we want the initial value to be zero and then do, and then the count is gonna be our accumulator. That's the number that's increasing. And then uh, we want to have like X and Y as like the two values in our pair. And the way that we're gonna use X and Y is we're gonna increment count. So we wanna return count plus one if X is less than Y, because if X is less than Y in the pair, that means that we're increasing. And so now what we can do is remove by bug, uh, and run our tests again. And we have two passing tests. Let's make sure that it, it works correctly when we're, um, when we're going, when we have a decrease. 
So it should count two increases um, with a decrease. Uh, so let's, let's say that we start with four and then we go down to one. So that should just be zero. And then we go to three and then we go back down to one. So this is just, there's nothing here. There's one increase, two increases, and then it's a decrease. So it's just two increases. So this is two increases. Um, so now that should also pass and it does not plus for nil class. Okay, here we go. We've got an, uh, uh, a plus for nil class. Okay, so what's happening is we're saying increment the count and return that if x is less than y, but if it's not less than y, then we should still return count. So uh, another way we can write this is we could simplify it and say if f, or yeah, if x is less than y, then do this, else count end. Right, that's a little bit nasty. Um, so another option is we uh, we can say count plus equals one and then return count at the end of the block for each time. It's a little bit simpler. Um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of like this this format. This is not actually the way that I solved it in the original, but we should get um, the number that we see in the example. So the next thing that I would do is copy all of these and make a test it works for example input. And now we want to say num is number of increases for our example input. And here we've got to fix this. Okay, so now we want to say we expect num to equal whatever they, t they told us the example value was. So in this case, seven, um, we expect that, that that output is gonna be equal to seven. So now we can run our tests again and we have four passing tests. At this point, I'm pretty confident that it's gonna work with the basic example input. So now we can do um, something here inside of our file. So uh, rather than kind of just running this giant file, or like we need, we need some way to get all of this input basically into our, into our code. So the way that I do this typically is I'll add like a new file here called input. And then I will copy all of the input and paste it in there. And now at the bottom of my Ruby file, I'm going to do this, this interesting thing where I say if underscore underscore file is equal to dollar zero. And what this does is it says, if Ruby is running this file, like if we're running this file directly, then run the code that's inside of this block. And when, when, we, when we mean run this file directly, we mean like dot slash num increases or Ruby day one num increases, et cetera, et cetera. So like um, basically if we're not just importing this file and using it as like, as we are as part of the test, then what we wanna do is we wanna read the input from a file. So we're going to say file.readlines um, and argv.first. So argv is basically this constant that is a container for any command line arguments that we pass when we're executing our Ruby code. Um, and so we're going to pass the name of the file as input into uh, our execution of this thing. So let me show you what I mean. So down here in the, in the bottom left, I'm gonna say Ruby day one num increases.rb day one input. So this is this is like uh, we're we're executing Ruby and we're we're calling this Ruby file. So we're running the num increases Ruby file. Now this is gonna be argv.first. So this is our first argument. And this is just the name of the input file. And so that's what we're passing in as the first argument is the name of the input file. And when we call file.readlines, that will read each of the lines and return an array that represents all of those lines. And so by default, it's just gonna have each line as a string. So if we do p input here, and we just run this uh, input, then you see each, we, we do get an array back, but each element in the array is a string with the number and a new line. So we need to do a couple things. We can like, uh, we want an integer value, and we also want it without the new line and we want it to not be a string. And if we just call 2i on this string value, we'll actually get back what we want. And so what we can do here is just say map 
uh, and 2i. And this is just a shortcut for the same thing that we could do is like m, m.2i. That's kind of the same thing. We're mapping over all of the elements and we're calling 2i, meaning we want the integer values. So if we run this again, now we see that we're getting back the integer values for all of the input. Next, we want to print out the value for num uh, or number of increases for that input. Now, if we run this, we, we get back 1,711, which was the correct answer for this puzzle. All right, so that's part one of day one of the advent of code. Hopefully that also helps you sort of get set up if you're thinking about doing this, like help, helps you sort of get logged in. When you're going through the first exercise, you'll see input boxes. You can kind of like enter in your answer as you go. So that was part one. Sometimes there's, a, uh, there's always part one and part two. Sometimes part one is easier and sort of like helps you get set up for part two. Sometimes part one sort of tricks you and like part two, you have to like do a significant refactoring to get it to work. So in this case, it says, considering every single measurement isn't as useful as you wanted, now let's use a three measurement sliding window. And what you wanna do is uh, you want to uh, uh, find the sum of that sliding window and then compare that versus the second sum of the sliding window. It's kind of like a daily moving average or something like that, uh, sort of, maybe not because you're not taking the average, but maybe it's similar, right? So you wanna, instead of just comparing like 199 and 200, we want to compare 199 plus 200 plus 208 with 200 plus 208 plus 210. And so we're going to compare A to B. And it, it turns out that we've like, we've actually already got like a pretty good setup for this. So what we can do is we can modify our code just a little bit. So instead of comparing each consecutive two, we want to compare each consecutive three. And now what's, uh, that will give us, um, each of the elements, A, B, C. Um, and actually, I think what we want to do is, yeah, we're going to use the same tool, each cons, to give us the windows. And then we're going to call number of increases on the windows. Okay, so let's get like def um, windows of input. And like, we'll, we'll say like how big we want the windows. And we'll just return input each cons three dot map. Um, so that's gonna that's gonna yield pair like these trip these triples, these triple tuples, <laughs> and we want to add the three together. Is there a sum method? Let's see. Uh, pry. Uh, a is one two three. A dot sum is that a thing? Wow. Okay. So what I was trying to think through is like, do, can we just map this and sum? Is that gonna give us what we think? So let's see, uh, input or uh, windows, give us the windows of input. So what's this? Wrong number, oh, wrong number of arguments because we want three and then this should actually just be like N so that we actually use what the input is. Um, Okay, I think that actually may have worked. So then what we wanna do is we wanna take each of those windows and call number of increases. Um, so here we're gonna say something like number of increases for those windows. So the first step is like breaking it apart and the second step is putting it back together. And our answer is 1743. Was that the answer we got? Yep, that's the answer for the puzzle. So that is part two for advent of code day one. Uh, hopefully that was useful. The thing that I like to play, I mean like the, the cool or like the, the takeaways for this exercise is really like playing around with each cons. Um, and then, yeah, like this is sort of a more functional approach. I think some of the other solutions will use classes, but um, yeah, there's, a, there's some good stuff in here. So hopefully that was useful and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.